The Malinois is a serious working dog, but that doesn't mean he is unlively and full of fun. He is a happy and affectionate companion who is known for a sense of humor. He will play with the kids as well as protect them, but as a herding dog with a strong prey drive, he may instinctively chase children who are running. Do not allow this. Work with your trainer to teach him a strong, calm, downstay or leave it command that you can use to stop this behavior. Always supervise play when children are around. He can get along well with cats and our dogs if he's raised with them since puppyhood, but tends to be on the bossy side. Some Malinois are not cat safe because of their high prey drive. The Malinois is a great companion for a runner, jogger or bicyclist. With that said, you will probably run out of steam before he does. While a Malinois may easily run for 5 miles or more, make sure to have your dog examined by your veterinarian before embarking on any exercise program. If your dog is free from any physical or medical conditions that could limit exercise, take him on strenuous hikes or let him run alongside your bicycle. A fence yard is also essential for helping him get the exercise he needs in a safely confined area. He'll enjoy fetch games and will chase a ball or flying disc for as long as you can throw it. Agility, fly ball, obedience, rally, and tracking are just a few of the dog sports in which he excels. The Malinois loves games and is often describing as having a high play drive. It's important to the Malinois to be a part of the family and he loves having their attention. He's wary of strangers and makes an excellent watchdog, but he needs lots of socialization to make sure he doesn't become overly suspicious. The more people he meets, the better his judgment becomes. A Malinois who is well socialized is a confident dog. When he meets people outside the family, his temperament can range from outgoing to reserved, but he should never be shy or aggressive. Say no thanks if a puppy's parents aren't approachable or if a puppy seems either fearful or aggressive. Train this sensitive and highly intelligent dog with light touch. He learns quickly and responds to moods and tones of voice, so harshness or rough treatment is often counterproductive. The Afghan hound is aloof and dignified except when he's being silly. Aloof doesn't mean shy. He should never be afraid of people and is usually not aggressive towards them. He takes his time getting to know people outside his family. People who are fortunate enough to be allowed into a circle of friends will experience a dog with an exuberant nature and a wicked sense of humor. Afghans do everything to extremes. They're drama queens and food thieves, bossy and mischievous. They have a high prey drive and although they may get along well with cats they were raised with, outdoor cats should fear for their lives when the Afghan springs into action. The Afghan is an independent thinker and is happy to do what you ask as long as that's what he wanted to do anyways. He's highly intelligent and learns quickly but he won't always respond to your commands or better yet requests. He's thinking about it. Maybe he'll do it later. Or not. This can make him frustrating to train and even more frustrating to compete with. Afghans have done well in sports such as agility and lure coursing, but only when their people have extreme patience, a never-ending sense of humor, and a good command of positive reinforcement techniques to lure him into compliance. The sport in which the Afghan excels, of course, is the lure coursing. If you're able to let him participate in this activity, you'll be rewarded by the sight of his breeding and heritage in action. Any dog, no matter how nice, can develop obnoxious levels of barking, digging, counter surfing, and other undesirable behaviors if he is bored, untrained, or unsupervised. Any dog can be a trial to live with during adolescence. Start training your puppy the day you bring him home. Even at 8 weeks old, he's capable of soaking up everything you can teach him. Don't wait until he's 6 months old to begin training or you will have a more headstrong dog to deal with. If possible, get him into puppy kindergarten class by the time he's 10 to 12 weeks old and socialize, socialize, socialize. However, be aware that many puppy training classes require certain vaccines like kennel cough to be up to date and many veterinarians recommend limited exposure to other dogs in public places until puppy vaccines including rabies, distemper and paravirus have been completed. In Leo of formal training, you can begin training your puppy at home and socializing him amongst family and friends until the puppy vaccines are completed. Talk to the breeder, describe exactly what you're looking for in the dog, and ask for assistance in selecting a puppy. Breeders see the puppies daily and can make uncannily accurate recommendations once they know something about your lifestyle and personality. Before we continue, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it would mean a lot. Thanks. Known as the Chien de Berger, the Malinois is often seen riding in a police car. This herding breed from Belgium, as he takes his name from the town of Malang, does not have a well-known history before the late 19th century and the late 1800s. 
He may have been helping shepherds care for flocks for centuries, but it wasn't until 1891, in a burst of national enthusiasm, the Belgian herding dogs were divided into types and given different names. The short-haired Malinois became quite popular as a herder, and his abilities were later turned to police and military work. Photos of police dog trials in 1903 show the Malinois climbing 10-foot ladders and performing other displays of agility. It's not surprising that many of the dogs were conscripted during the World War I. The American Kennel Club accepted the breed in 1911, calling them Belgian Sheepdogs and not separating them by coat type. Today, the Malinois is a popular police and military dog and can be a good family companion and a right home. The Afghan Hound is from Afghanistan, but little is known of his early history or how long he's existed. A drawing of one of the dogs sent home by Thomas Stewart Broughton while he was in India in 1809 was published in a book of letters in 1813, so the breed has certainly been around for more than 200 years and likely very much longer. Studies of the canine genome indicate that the Afghan descended from one of the oldest types of dogs. The dogs in Afghanistan were found in several different types depending on the region they were from. Dogs from mountainous areas were more compact with darker, heavier coats, while desert dwelling dogs were more rangy with coats that were lighter in both color and volume. They were used to course fast running games such as deer and antelope, as well as hares, wolves, and jackals. Hunting in partnership with falcons, they flushed quail and partridges for the falcon to bring down or for the hunter to shoot. British military officers brought the dogs back to the west after being posted to the India-Afghanistan border and the dogs unfortunately died out in Europe during the World War I because food shortages limited the breeding and keeping of dogs. But breeding began again in 1920 when some desert time Afghans were imported to Scotland by people who had been stationed in Balochistan. Some of the mountain type dogs were sent from Kabul to England in 1925. During the same decade, Americans imported some of the Afghans from Britain. All dogs have the potential to develop genetic health problems, just as all people have the potential to inherit a particular disease. Run and don't walk from any breeder who does not offer a health guarantee on puppies, who tells you that the breed is 100% healthy and has no known problems, or who tells you that her puppies are isolated from the main part of the household for health reasons. A reputable breeder will be honest and open about health problems in the breed and the incidents with which they occur in their lines. A few health problems that have been seen in a Belgian Malinois include hip and elbow dysplasia, progressive renal atrophy, cataracts, panias, and epilepsy. The American Belgian Malinois Club, which is the American Kennel Club parent organization for the breed in the United States, participates in the CHIC. For a Belgian Malinois to achieve CHIC certification, he must have OFA or Pen HP certification for hips, an OFA clearance for elbows, and an eye clearance from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation. In Afghan hounds, health problems can include hip and elbow dysplasia, juvenile cataracts, and bleeding disorders such as von Willebrand disease. Ask the breeder to show evidence that both parents have been certified free of juvenile cataracts by a veterinarian and have a hip evaluation of excellent, good or fair from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals. For an Afghan to achieve CHIC certification, he must have Orthopedic Foundation for Animals OFA or Panhip certifications for hip, an OFA thyroid evaluation and an eye clearance from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation. Breeders must agree to have all test results, positive or negative, published in the CHIC database. A dog need not receive good or even passing scores on the evaluations to obtain a CHIC number, so CHIC registration alone is not proof of soundness or absence of disease, but all test results are posted on the CHIC website and can be accessed by anyone who wants to check the health of a puppy's parents. A good breeder will be able to discuss the prevalence of all health problems in her dog's lines, those with and without genetic screening tests, and how puppy buyers make an informed decision about health risks to their dog. Don't fall for a dishonest breeder's sales pitch. If the breeder tells you she doesn't need to do those tests because she's never had any problem in her lines, her dogs have been vet checked, or any of the other excuses bad breeders have for skimping on the genetic testing for their dogs, walk away immediately. Careful breeders screen the breeding dogs for genetic diseases and breed only the healthiest and best looking specimens. But sometimes mother nature has other ideas and a puppy develops one of those diseases despite good breeding practices. Advances in veterinary medicine means that in most cases the dogs can still live a good life. If you're getting a puppy, ask the breeder about the ages of the dogs in her lines and what they died of. Remember that after you've taken a new puppy into your home, you have the power to protect him from one of the most common health problems in dogs, obesity. 
Keeping your dog in an appropriate weight is one of the easiest ways to extend his life. Make the most of your preventive abilities to help ensure a healthier dog for life. The Malinois has a short, straight coat that sheds heavily. The coat is heavy around the neck and on the tail and near the back of the thighs. Brush it at least weekly to remove dead hair and distribute skin oils. Brush a little more often to help keep loose hair from landing on your floor, furniture and clothing. Bathe him only as needed. The Afghan Hound has long, thick, silky hair with a fine texture. The coat does not need to be clipped or trimmed and the dog wears it in all its glory. The finishing touch is a top knot of long, silky hair. Grooming is an essential part of living with an Afghan Hound. Plan to brush and comb the Afghan Hound's thick, silky hair three times a week to prevent or remove mats and tangles and bathe them as needed. You may want to invest in a professional dog blow dryer if you bathe him frequently. The Afghan sheds moderately. The more often you brush him, the less hair you will have falling off the dog and onto your floors, furniture and clothing. The rest is basic care. Trim the nails as needed, usually once a month, and good dental hygiene is important. So brush the teeth frequently for good overall health and fresh breath. Check the ears weekly for dirt, redness, or a bad odor that can indicate an infection. If the ears look dirty, wipe them out with a cotton ball dampened with a gentle ear cleaner recommended by a veterinarian. It's best to introduce your dog to grooming at an early age so he will accept it gracefully. Alright guys. Which one do you think you'll get? Tell me down in the comments.